In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with angles both on and inside a circle. In example A, it says, find the measure of arc AEB. So that's this arc right here. And if we look at this picture closely, we notice that we have a tangent line that intersects the circle at point A and a secant line, which is basically like a chord that keeps going uh, at AB. So the angle that is created by those two is 133 degrees. And what you should remember is that this angle will always be half the measure of the arc that is intercepted by the chord and the tangent line. So that means the measure of arc AEB will equal 2 times 133 degrees, which is 266 degrees. So this angle right here is always half the measure of the arc, or in other words, the arc is always double the measure of the angle. In example B, it says find the measure of angle BAD. So angle BAD is right here, and it's a similar sort of picture to last time. We have a tangent line and a chord that extends to be a secant line. So that means the angle will be half the measure of the arc. And we're given the arc is 124 degrees. So that means that the measure of angle BAD will just be 124 divided by 2, which is 62 degrees. In example C, it says find A, B, and C. So let's look at this picture. We have a tangent line and some secant lines. So we have an accord over here. Uh, we have the situation where we have an angle and an arc that are both sort of on the circle. So because this angle is 50 degrees, it means that arc, arc AB, must be 100 degrees. And similarly, since this angle right here is 45 degrees, it means this arc, AC, must be 90 degrees, because we just times by 2. That's going to help us out to figure out uh, some of our angles here. If we look at angle C, angle C is an inscribed angle to arc AB. So since arc AB is 100 degrees, that means C must be 50 degrees because an inscribed angle is always half the measure of its arc. So C equals 50 degrees because it's half of 100. Similarly, if we look at B, this angle is also an inscribed angle and it's an inscribed angle to arc AC. So that means it's half the measure of arc AC. So B is going to be 45 degrees. Now there's a couple ways that we could figure out angle A. Probably the easiest is to notice that we have a triangle that's formed by A, B, and C. Those are the three angles in the triangle. That means they have to add up to 180 degrees. So A plus B plus C is 180 degrees, but we already know B and C are 45 and 50. So to get A, we can just do 180 minus 45 minus 50. And we get 85 degrees. Now just so you know, another way you could have figured that out is first figure out what the measure of this arc has to be because we know the full circle is 360 degrees, and we already know that we have one arc that's 100 and one arc that's 90, so the rest of it would have to be 170 degrees. And then angle A is an inscribed angle to this arc right here, so it would have to be half of 170 degrees, which is 85 degrees.